and more. Oh, make me love him more and more. Yeah, more. Jesus, you too late, I dear son. Jesus, you too late, son. I dear How can I love thee as I ought? How can I love thee as I ought thee as I ought? And how I stole a much less fair And how I stole a much less fair And how I stole The glorious beauty of thy name The glorious beauty shepherd and because the Lord is my shepherd come on church I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd come on there are needs that are going to be in my life there are things that I'm going to want in my life but I know that my redeemer liveth and he is my shepherd he will provide my needs come on now Jehovah is his name the hymn writer says uh, and 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 david here he writes that uh, he make it me to lie down in green pastures uh, when things are rough with me when things are tough with me uh, the lord will provide a place a green pasture for me that even though uh, i i have problems in finding out uh, and even though I have problems in providing for my family, the Lord will provide green pastures for me. Back in the Caribbean, we know about it. Where, where we know that where there is a place where we can go and, and the breeze is there prevalent. Uh, we know that it, uh, uh, yeah, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death? Oh, come on. I shall fear no evil. The prophet writes, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hey, come on, no, no weapon shall form against me shall, it may come. It is going to come and, 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 and it may last for a while, but through the mercies of God, through the strength of God, he's mighty to save. And oh, he, that God, is strong to deliver, even though the things are going to come where, where the weapons are going to come, the darts are going to come, where, where the arrows are going to come, and they're going to come at me. God is going to remove them because he is my shepherd. He restored my soul. Sometimes we, we, we do things in our lives that are contrary to God's uh, uh, belief. Sometimes we do things that are not uh, in alignment with the master's plan. Amen. And sometimes we find ourselves in a rut. And sometimes we do things that, that, that make God sprung at us. But oh, David writes, he restore it. Amen. Yes, he restore it myself. Uh, and 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 what I like, he says, thou preparest a table, come on, for me in in the presence of my enemies. Come on, you ever come and you see your enemies looking at you, and, and God is providing the basic things that you need in the presence of your enemies, even though they may look at you and wish you bad. God. Hello. Hey. God is still providing. He is my shelter. 
in the time of storms. Oh, oh my God and my Redeemer, thou anointest my head with oil. Oh, come on, come on. Even when I know I have the headaches, even though when I am bothering myself, well, where is it going to come from? I know my Redeemer liveth. Oh, come on, come on. My cup runneth. Over. When God is finished with you and, 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 and you are there and you have nothing in your life, uh, when, when, when you are thinking, oh God, my bills are 5,000. I only have a thousand, God. Where is the fall going to come from? Oh God, David writes, my cup, run it over. Hey, surely goodness. You see, um, 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 you may be walking, but and you may thinking that uh, your back is not covered. But the, David writes, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And, and, and because it follows me, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And the only way to do this is by going according to the laws and stipulations by the master. My shepherd will supply my need. Jehovah is his name. We want to thank God that he provided a son that that shed his blood, that shed his efficacious blood for us on a cross, a wooden cross in, in, in a place uh, where only slaughtering took place, a place called Calvary in Golgotha. And, 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 and when, when Jesus was almost ready to die, he yelled out to, to his father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, but he came to fulfill, and the prophecy had to be fulfilled, and he said, it is finished. My work on here, on earth is done. It is finished. Let us welcome none other than teacher Martin Dyer. In Jesus' almighty name, in Jesus' almighty name. You know, in death's dark veil, I fear no ill. Mm -hmm. With thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod mm -hmm. and staff, my comfort still, yes. thy cross before to guide me. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are here one more time giving God thanks and praise for keeping us from one week to another. And I'm just so happy, Mother Marilyn, to have your mother in our midst and to each and every one that's here. We want to say praise God, praise, oh praise, our God and King, hymns of adoration sing, for his mercy still endure, ever faithful, ever, ever sure. sure. So today our text was taken from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. That was our focus. Mm -hmm. And um, we were discussing some things in Bible class and um, our theme today is in God's comforting arms. Mm -hmm. My question to you is what comfort, what is, what's comforting you? What brings you comfort? Mm -hmm. Each person needs to figure out what brings them comfort. Mm. And I'm not just talking uh, biblically now. Let's let's look at it from a from a, a corner perspective. If you search yourself and ask yourself, what comforts you? What are some things that you find comfort in? Is it that you find comfort within the arms of somebody else? Do you find comfort in the words that someone gives you from time to time? Do you find comfort in the fact that you have you know, maybe you own your own car so you don't have to be bothered with anybody else when you're ready to go where you got to go. I mean, do you, what, what exactly do you find comfort in? Do you find comfort in you, your enjoyment in what you do? Maybe your job, probably teaching others or probably, you know, working with your hands. What comforts you? Because there are some times that we have a certain skill or something that we like. Some people say a pastime. Other people say a hobby. Right? And we take to those hobbies as things of comfort when we're not really 
working too hard and doing you know our regular day job whatever it is if it's going on the internet to on the YouTube just to see all the services to get a word probably I don't know what it is what comforts you so you need to search yourself we all need to search ourselves and figure out what it is that comforts us okay or what brings you comfort but I'm here to tell you that um, God is not a hobby he's not one of our hobbies that he will we can use him to bring comfort to us only in certain times or certain particular areas of our lives he's not a hobby he is an all-seeing God, an all-knowing God, an omnipresent God, here, there, and everywhere. Amen. So he hears, he knows, he sees what is happening. I'm going to say that we, like Isaiah, are ambassadors for God. Amen. Because um, in our, our Bible class, you know, the pastor said that he could be you know, compared to as um, Al Sharpton and Malcolm X, if you will. And looking back in history, carnally, those men are people who fight for others who don't have a voice or who is probably not aware of the laws and who is not aware of certain things according to the land that they can get help for certain things. and is a way to know that if we stick together and we have someone leading for us, we can go places. But he can't just stand by himself and fight it off for us. Mm -hmm. Martin X was fighting a cause, but he was doing it for the people of Islam. But at the same token, within Islam, there were some things that weren't right. Okay? Um, likewise, um, Isaiah was an activist for the people of Israel after they came out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, doing the things that they were doing, it was not right and pleasing. So sometimes you have somebody that is crisis advocate to say, listen, get yourself together. We have an advocate, you know, but there's sometimes that somebody else can stand in the gap for us. There are times that we know that we can go to God. And for whatever reason, we become either stubborn about something or we hear a voice to say, do something, and we don't do it. But there are times that he puts us in a situation that somebody else has to come and whisper in our ears or, or, or hand us something so that we now can do what it is that God wants us to do. So what I'm saying to you is, is that we see where the people of Israel did not realize the power of God. We can call ourselves Israel too, you know, because we came out of a bondage as well. Okay? The bondage of this world and sin. So we choose now to say that, okay, we're going to serve God wholeheartedly and give Him our whole heart. But there are still times that we are lacking the realization or the knowledge or maybe better yet the understanding of who God is and the power that we have within him as long as we dwell within him. You understand what I just said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot do anything for ourselves. We can't stand alone. We can't sleep. We can't do nothing no, without no. God. We are nothing without him. But if we dwell within him and how can we dwell within God? We have to read his word, we have to give him some time and give him some praise and give him some thanks so that we can dwell within him. So as Israel, as, as, as Isaiah become the activist or the ambassador of God to reach out to people, telling them to worship God, right? Praise him. That is all God requires of us. Praise yes, Him. Lord. Bow down to Him. Mm -hmm. Worship Him. Yes, Acknowledge yes, Him. Yes, Cry out to Him. Yes, shout on behalf of Him. Mm -hmm. Because when we are shouting, we are shouting on behalf. Because sometimes when you're so happy, you get a good news, you jump up. Yes. <laughs> you run from here to there. Yes. 
you clap your hands, whatever the joy is, we should still have it every day as long as we're up. The, the mortal body sometimes, you have an achy, you have a pain there. But you're not stagnant. You're up and you would get that little pain until you start going. The more you move, you, the less you feel it for whatever reason. As soon as you sit too long, then you realize, and this is how we should live God's word. word. Keep it. Don't keep it forever. Don't keep it for too long. As soon as you get something, go with it. Run with it. If it's in a testimony, if it's in a, um, some, something where maybe a motivational speaking, if it's an opportunity to help another person, whatever it is, all God wants us to do is to worship Him. I said before that a lot of times we talk about giving thanks and praise to Almighty God. And sometimes we talk about giving thanks in laying a table. And I was saying earlier in my Bible class that before these glasses were filled, to us we can see the actual water now, that they are filled. But when there was no water in each of them, does that mean it was empty? No, it wasn't. It had air. It was full of air. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that is the same blind trust that we should have for God. Mm -hmm. Knowing that He is our comforter because He's here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even though with our naked eye the glass look empty, it is not. We need to trust and know this with the same principle. To know that just because the glass is there and it is empty does not mean that God is not there. Amen. So we should have that same principle. The second principle is that I said to, in order for us to worship and praise God and give Him thanks and praise, is not just by the spreading of a thanksgiving table. I made reference and example to having one glass with one water mm -hmm. and maybe a flower within the glass and maybe one light. And I asked the question, does that mean that I can't shout and give God thanks and praise for what he has done for me? Mm -hmm. I can. Because these things are just the outward things to beautify certain things. God is not concerned with those things. He concerned with the heart. As long as my heart is in the right place and I know that I'm giving thanks for what God has done for me, is as if I feel like the lady who found the, 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 the lost piece of, of, of silver, that she says, come and rejoice with me. Give God thanks and praise. It's like having a good joke. Anybody ever tell you a good joke and you giggle and you laugh with that person and that person share the joke with you and you in turn share it with somebody else. And as you go, you put a smile on everybody's face. It's the same principle with God. Very, very same principle. If you have something good to declare and to say about God, then do it happily. Okay? Mm -hmm. So God only requires us to praise Him because that's all He wants us to praise Him and to worship Him. Not to worship the car, the house, the children. The things that charms us most. Because those are the things that sometimes we get the most trials with. Mm -hmm. um, John 14 verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a reassurance that God is telling us that no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what is taking place, that be assured, rest assured, that He is right there, always. Then in Psalms, I look at Psalms um, 40, verse 10, that says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I, declare, I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and the truth from the great congregation. So when we come to church, it's supposed to be like spreading a joke. We all should be able to can laugh one with another. We all supposed to be able to, you know, declare. Have you ever declared something, how good God is to you? Right? The same Thanksgiving when we set a table, we 
have a declaration. We tell others what God has done. It could have been a personal thing, or it could just be a thing where you said, you know what, I just want to give God thanks overall for keeping me here, for keeping my life, for helping me, to help me to get thus far by faith. Sometimes it's giving thanks for our spirituality, for our spiritual growth, for our spiritual liberation. Because thank God, thank God that we can still come together and worship. What a time when the day come that we can't meet together, we can't worship, there's no telephones, there's no Bibles, what would we do? So we try now to come and to absorb as much of God's words, as much of his teachings, and apply them to ourselves so that we can be of some comfort to some other soul, to our brothers, to our sisters, or maybe even to a stranger that is, you know, is, is seems so despondent sometimes. I wanted to look at another te text. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse tells us who comforted us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So it's like a chain reaction. I comfort you, you comfort me, God comforts me, God comforts you, God comforts us. It's a chain reaction. It's like blocks. You put them down. As soon as you push one, all of them fall down. <laughs> and this is how this is that this is the, the kind of chain reaction that we want to continue and to keep in our lives so that we can spread God's word because that is the only way we can do it. Now I'm not gonna say that we all have the same approach and the same way to do it. Okay? I'm being recorded. This might be one way. Yeah, I go and look on YouTube, maybe I'll be surprised that I find myself there. <laughs> so I can look now and realize and understand for myself, my own message, what God has been doing in my life to be able to allow me to speak and to comfort others. Yeah. Auntie Grace might be praying, um, Pastor Sherwin could be singing, Mother Marilyn feeding the homeless, whatever it is, you know, um, Brother Justin playing the, job, the drum, um, Sister Shanice, teaching is teaching all the way you look at it. It's just a matter of um, the curriculum. That's it. So my thing is, is that we all have our charge that we have to keep. We all have our purpose that we have to have, that we have to do God's bidding. And so I just want to know, I just want us to know that we can continue to be activists for Almighty God, ambassadors for Almighty God, and we're just thankful that we are here, that we can accept and realize and not be naive like Israel and do what they want and worship all kinds of idols and that we can know that we are worshiping the true and the living God. With these words, I say peace. peace. peace.